Hello everybody, John here. And today onto the garage, we're gonna talk about drop links and anti-roll bars and how to diagnose the knocks that they make and then replace them. So today we're out in Ellie, my 2005 Nissan L Grand E51. And I've had a bit of suspension noise for quite some time now. And I've known, or at least been pretty sure, that it's the drop links on the anti-roll bar at the front. So I thought we'd just start this video off, seeing if I can get it to make the noise and seeing if you guys can hear it. The noise is are partially heard, partially felt, if you like. And it's happening now. There's a kind of knocking noise coming from the front suspension. It's subtle, um, but I know it's there. That's a good one. And if it is drop links, It'll tend to be when the car is not cornering. It'll be when the car is reasonably flat and level on a slightly uneven surface where one of the front wheels is asked to articulate up and down and the other one isn't. It can sound a lot like you've got a track rod end or ball joint failing, but with a drop link, it's the when it happens more than anything. As I say, this, this sort of flat travel. If you've got track rod ends that are giving you issue, you'll very often feel the knock through the steering wheel or can generate the knock by rocking the steering wheel backwards and forwards. If it's ball joints, it can give all the same sounds and symptoms as this but typically putting some side load on the car so driving around a bend and then taking that lock off will cause the bear, the ball joints to move and knock some more so I don't know how much of that you can hear but for me that's really obvious what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try placing the microphone outside, underside, in the hope that you can hear that better. So today we're swapping the drop links on the L Grand, but this process is exactly the same on practically any car. This is the drop link. Uh, it's basically two ball joints, one here and one down there, linked by a rod. And known as the drop link because it moves the joint from here on the strut tower on my car down to the anti-roll bar here and connects those two movements. In the UK, we occasionally call these dumbbells. I don't know whether that's true elsewhere in the world. And the anti-roll bar 
is an anti-roll bar in the UK, but I know that in the States they're often referred to as sway bars or anti-sway bars, but all meaning the same thing. Now the knocking noise is almost certain to be coming from one of these two ball joints and it'll be moving around in its socket and causing the clonking as this bar is doing its job and trying to keep the end of the anti-roll bar at an equal distance from this point. The drop links will last forever on some cars and they tend to be cars with small diameter anti-roll bars. This car has an enormous anti-roll bar. I don't know how well that sort of shows up for scale on camera, but that is around 30 millimeters diameter. And you get very, very thick anti-roll bars on some commercial vehicles and on sporting vehicles. And what you've got with the El Grand is a really weird combo of a van with a three and a half litre V6 petrol feeding the rear wheels that handles far better than it has any right to for such a tall vehicle. And some of that is achieved with very, very thick anti-roll bars. If you get a Toyota Alphard, which is the closest thing this thing's got to a competitor in most regards, it's less of an engaging drive. It's more comfortable but less of a sporting drive and it's got a lot thinner anti-roll bars. And what the anti-roll bar is trying to do is when this side of the car is on the outside of a bend, it will, the car will lean over and compress this spring. And that's unavoidable and to an extent actually desirable because it increases pressure and grip on the outside wheel. However, the top of the car is going to lean over, particularly on a tall vehicle, which is uncomfortable. And if you were to switch to go round an opposite handed bend immediately after, there's a time delay in the car being able to climb back to vertical and then lean over the other way. So for a sporting drive, it's great to minimize this lean. So as this car with its big anti-roll bars leans over on this, the outside, the right hand side of the car on the outside of the bend. So the wheel will effectively go up inside the wheel arch. As it goes up inside the wheel arch. So this point goes up inside the wheel arch and the drop link pulls this anti-roll bar up and it's pivoted through this big bush at the front and as it pulls this side up it pulls up the equivalent arm on the opposite side and effectively compresses the suspension on the inside of the bend so rather than leaning towards the outside of the bend because this suspension is now under pressure what the anti-roll bar is trying to do is saying hello that's compressing this side so i'm going to compress the suspension on the other side so the car gets lower as it goes around the bend rather than just leaning as it goes around the bend the anti-roll bar no matter how stiff and bigger diameter has some twist and play in it so the car will always lean a little <clears throat> but with the anti-roll bar engaged and the drop links doing their job you go from lean heavily next bend lean heavily to lean down lean down and that's how anti-roll bars work and is why drop links take a real punishing because they're constantly trying to transmit the movement of a shock of this wheel hitting a bump over to the other wheel. Smaller, lighter cars. Uh, one that comes to mind is an MGB. Um, early MGBs have quite lightweight anti-roll bars as do MG midgets. Not a lot bigger in diameter than this track rod. 
and they twist a lot more. So although they're trying to keep the car level, they surrender quite easily and don't transmit too much of the movement to the other wheel. In being more compliant and have a softer, thinner anti-roll bar, they apply less violent forces to the drop link and so the drop links last longer. Let's get this drop link off and see what the situation is. Process will be very similar on most cars. <clears throat> if you're following along on a E51 Nissan L Grand, then hello. <laughs> and I'm using a 19 mil socket. I'm using my uh, impact gun, but you don't need to. Spanner will do the job. And on the L Grand, there's these little tabs that turn with the bolt that comes through, so it can't spin. On some cars, you may have to put a spanner behind an open-ended onto two flats, just to stop the bolt from spinning. A little harder for access with my gun down here, but we will cope because convenient. There we go. And then we can just pull that out. Well, I'm over at my vice and one of the joints is quite stiff. And I'm going to guess that one was relatively okay. The boot on it, the rubber boot is reasonably intact. The other side, the boot is split and I can move that round rather easily. If I do it by my microphone, it's a sort of squeaking noise. If I just put the unit in the vice, I can move it, and that is the noise we're getting. I'm just going to put my mic there for you. That's all it will need to make that clonking noise. Eventually, ultimate damage is for this to pop and actually come adrift, which is obviously bad. Um, however, the lack of an anti-roll bar will create some weird handling, but won't immediately crash the car or, or steer you into a ditch. So yeah, undesirable, but it's not a um, fatal fault as a rule. Equally, don't let that happen. Yeah, that is toast. I've done 50,000 miles um, and that's the result. That gives you a clue if you've got an L Grand. And I've decided to buy some pattern parts rather than genuine. Many pattern parts are the equal of OE. Um, I'm not suggesting that these are, I'm just saying they're not always inferior quality. Um, I've had a look at these already. They look well manufactured. They are manufactured differently. Um, it's not an attempt to replicate, so the, the design and manufacture is different. But it's going to do the job. And I think a pair of these cost me 55 pounds for those who are interested 54667 WL010 stabilizer link Nissan Grand E51 and the company is AMC Filia always good to just check dimensionally the same and with the E51 there is no left hand right hand top or bottom they're basically symmetrical if you're going to do this job on your L Grand, mine's a two wheel drive. If you've got a four wheel drive, I believe the links are different, different length. Um, but the task is exactly the same. So you'll be carrying out the same activity as me. So just get our new one. Pop him into position.
There we go. There we go, all done. Hopefully now, no noises. Obviously I'll do the one on the other side as well. Well, we've done the job. Let's see if it's done the job. I come back from a little test run, I will retalk the wheel nuts. Always a good idea. Yep, it's cured. There's a little bump there that always triggers the noise and in a significant manner. So we can assume we done. So that's a 55 pounds fix, I think. Not bad for a significant piece of hardware on a Japanese domestic market only grey import vehicle. And that is so much quieter. And whilst I always knew what it was um it doesn't alter the fact that you often wonder oh should i pull over and have a look at that again is something else going wrong is a ball joint going is a wheel loose it's just that disconcerting sound and now no noise plus there'll be a little less roll and a little bit better still handling I'd rate drop links as an easy job to do. Hardest part is jacking the car up and removing the wheels. And if you're not doing it on an L Grand, then obviously you have to locate the drop links, but they should be pretty easy. Anti-roll bars are pretty obvious things and you're just looking for nuts and bolts attaching something to the ends or near the ends of the anti-roll bar and then linking it back to, depending on the car, the strut tower or the chassis itself. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos and below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat